What's up, guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Shark Bites and the start of season seven. Season seven, wow. Who'd have thought we'd get here, eh? I'm really looking forward to bombarding you all with some more shark content this season, and today we've got a right goodie for you. This is a story that we have covered briefly here on Shark Bites before, most notably in a video that we did last year entitled, Why are Orcas Hunting Great White Sharks? For those of you that haven't seen that video, it does actually set up the background for this video quite well, so if you wanted to watch it, you can click that link there, or stick around to the end screen. Also, during the off season, I did discuss some pretty cool great white shark stuff with Chantel Easton across on her channel, Telly's Marine Tales. So make sure you go and check out that video that we did together and check out Chantel's channel. She's got loads of videos on there that I know lots of you on Shark Bites will enjoy, so go and check her out. Links are, of course, in the description. But first, for today's video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background information on the story of South Africa's great white sharks. And strap yourselves in because this one is a very weird and very wild one. So back in 2017, great white shark numbers in South Africa started to decline massively. To give you all a little bit of context, the areas in which they were declining were places like False Bay and Gansby and Mossel Bay. And these areas were considered to be hotspots for great white sharks in South Africa. They were once the go-to places to cage dive with great white sharks. And they were seen pretty much on every single trip out and in big numbers. Back in 2011 in Cape Town, shark spotters recorded a peak of 300 great white shark sightings across eight different beaches. But importantly, they haven't seen a single great white shark since 2019. And it was because of this previous high abundance of great white sharks that South Africa's economy benefited massively from the tourism. So the disappearance of these white sharks in 2017 was just bad news all round. It was bad news for the sharks, it was bad news for the tourism, and it was bad news for the scientists that were doing some pretty epic research on them. When I say disappeared, by the way, I don't mean they completely disappeared disappeared from all of these areas, but their numbers were down considerably. The numbers were so far down that many of the great white shark tour operators that were in these areas actually ended up going bust. Supposedly, they tried to offer a few different things like kelp forest diving excursions, but that wasn't enough to entice the tourists in. They wanted to see the great white sharks. For a while, everyone was speculating on loads of different reasons as to why this had happened. Some were saying it was over-exploitation and illegal fishing, but the real reason, which we only found out in 2021, was killer whales. Yep, those dastardly sea pandas were to blame. Trust me here, guys, never trust a killer whale. So it turned out some killer whales in the area were actually feeding on the great white sharks, namely two particular individuals, Port and Starbuck, named after their dorsal fins being bent in the corresponding direction. Port and Starbuck, and perhaps other killer whales that we don't know of, were actively hunting and feeding on great white sharks in South Africa. They'd even got so good at it, they figured out how to place the sharks in tonic immobility. And while they were in that trance-like state, split opened their ventral side and ate their liver. I know, real Hannibal Lecter vibes. I ate his liver with some fava beans. The video that I did on this last year does go into the aerial footage that we have of killer whales doing this. So if you wanted some in-depth analysis on that behavior, make sure you go and check out that video. It's actually crazy. After that video surfaced of the killer whales doing this, scientists started to publish research papers to back up their claims. And they were finding that after killer whale attacks on great white sharks, all of the white sharks in that area would just disappear. And they didn't come back for a very long time. In truth, they didn't properly come back at all. We're a few years down the line now, and the sharks that were once in False Bay and Mossel Bay just aren't really there anymore. And that also had some pretty profound ecological changes as well. Other species like bronze whalers and seven gill sharks moved into the areas where the white sharks were previously to fill that ecological niche that had been left behind. So rightfully so, the disappearance of great white sharks was pretty much entirely blamed on the killer whales. But the scientists were still trying to figure out exactly what had happened to the great white sharks. Had they all been killed or had they just moved to somewhere else? And importantly, were they ever gonna come back? Initially, they really didn't know whether all of them might have been killed. Because when sharks' livers are removed, more often than not, that carcass would probably sink to the bottom of the ocean and we wouldn't have even known that it had happened. So we didn't know just how many sharks the killer whales Port and Starboard had killed. It could have been hundreds. But fortunately, as of a few months ago, They've only gone and found them. A research paper has been released by Heather Bowlby alongside some other pretty prominent great white shark researchers in South Africa, Alison Towner and Alison Cock. And in that paper, they showed that the great white sharks hadn't all been killed, but instead they'd moved from the western southern areas of South Africa all the way over to the east. Places like Algoa Bay and KwaZulu Natal had seen an eightfold increase in their great white shark sightings over the space of a few years. Alison Cock, one of the authors of that study, said they started to crack the mystery when reports started flying in from the east. 
East. These places had seen great white sharks before, but in nowhere near the numbers that they were seeing them now. And that increase in the population had happened far too quickly for it to be classed as a reproduction boom, because it's just not biologically possible for the great white sharks to be able to reproduce that quickly to see that level of increase. So they moved from West to East. What's the big deal? Well, the potential problem here is that an influx of white sharks at these numbers could have profound impacts on those areas. We don't really know what kind of ecological impact it's going to have for a start because these white sharks are moving into an area where they've previously only been seen in low numbers. And that means there could be some pretty big ramifications on the food chain in those regions. The eastern coast of South Africa does have seal populations, but nowhere near as many as what they have on the west coast. Around two thirds of the Cape fur seal population, which is thought to be about two million individuals, lives off the coast of Namibia, which is way over to the west. Admittedly, I don't have much local knowledge on the seal populations on that eastern coast of South Africa, but I'll bet there's nowhere near as many seals on the east coast as there are on the west. And it presents us with another potential issue, and that's negative shark-human interactions, shark attacks. The study by Heather Bowlby noticed that alongside this eastern shift for the great white sharks came an increase in shark attacks. More shark attacks started cropping up in those eastern regions, whereas previously most had occurred in the west. A couple in particular stand out, which occurred in Plettenberg Bay. This area, which is a little bit further east from Mossel Bay, had two fatal shark attacks in the space of a few months back in 2022, which was almost unheard of for the area. Chantelle and I did discuss these two attacks in the collab that we did during the off season, so make sure you go and check out that video because it's really interesting. As per, links in the description. But we can see that as the sharks started to head further east, the chances of them encountering humans increased. And when places like this start to get a boom in white shark numbers, they might not be very well prepared to deal with that. For example, in Plettenberg Bay at Central Beach, where one of the fatal attacks took place, they didn't have any measures there to prevent shark attacks. And you can't really blame them because they'd never had a shark attack there before. Not that I particularly agree with shark nets and drum lines, but they weren't there either. Nor were there any drones or beach spotters. So when you start to get these distribution shifts to different areas, we might start seeing an increase in attacks. It's obviously all pretty hypothetical at the moment because we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. Because this eastern shift for white sharks has only really started to become apparent in the last few years. There's also question marks as well as to whether port and starboard, those two killer whales, will follow the sharks east. To my knowledge, I haven't heard that the killer whales have started to move east yet, but these are animals that can travel really, really long distances in a very short space of time. So it's entirely possible that port and starboard could also move eastwards to continue hunting and feeding on great white sharks. If they do choose to do that, though, it could spark real trouble for the great white sharks in South Africa, because really there's going to be nowhere for them to hide. These species could be stuck in a permanent chase with each other, i.e. the sharks move from west to east, so the killer whales move from west to east, but then the sharks perhaps move from east to west and the killer whales follow them again east to west. And this could just carry on in some never ending loop. Or a little bit more worryingly, it could mean the white sharks disappear from South Africa forever. It's all pretty exciting though, because we just don't know what's gonna happen. There are so many different outcomes, but although exciting, it doesn't come without certain risks. The shark spotters program, which has had some real successes in South Africa over the last few years, is probably gonna have to move from west to east with the sharks. Increased signage and warnings for swimmers and bathers is probably gonna to have to go up pretty quickly in places like Algoa Bay and maybe even up into Mozambique. But all things considered, I think it's pretty great that these scientists have managed to solve this mystery. It's a mystery that's been bubbling away now for at least the last six years, so it can finally be put to bed. Why did the great white sharks disappear from South Africa? The killer whales. And where did they go? East. It's been really fun to cover this topic here with you guys on Shark Bites over the last few years though. And it's great that we can all learn about the intricacies of white shark behavior, their distribution, and their relationship with other top marine predators in this part of the world. What do you all think about this recent discovery then? Do you think killer whales and great white sharks are gonna be stuck in a never ending predator prey loop? Are shark attacks gonna start increasing on the eastern coast of South Africa? I wanna hear all your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you also stick around to the end screen guys where you can check out that in-depth analysis on port and starboard and how they've been killing great white sharks. It's got some absolutely epic drone footage in that video where we go into some real in-depth analysis on what they're doing. So if you wait about 15 seconds, it's gonna pop up on your screen right about here. Also, please do go and check out Telly's Marine Tales and the video that we did together about Plettenberg Bay. If she hasn't released it as of when you're watching this video, I'll make sure to link it on the community tab and in the description after the video comes out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel by channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos until then see you next time